Slender Man's Shadow is a spin-off series based on Slender the Eight Pages made by Mark Steen and Ray Burgess in 2012. This series is known to be one of the most popular series in the Slender franchise and was a big hit back then due to many popular YouTubers including PewDiePie, Markiplier, and Yamamash playing this game series. It introduced many new locations, glow sticks, and many more features. I'm Simon. And I am Micro. And this is the Slender Man's Shadow Iceberg. Happy 10th anniversary, by the way. Starting with the top layer, it would only be appropriate to mention the difficulty of prison first. On October 8th of 2012, Mark released Slender Prison. People were complaining that 7th Street was too easy, so he made Slender's AI more aggressive, which resulted in prison becoming the most difficult Slender game in not only the Slender Man's Shadow series, but probably also the most difficult Slender game to exist. On October 12th of 2012, Mark uploaded a video about tips and tricks for how to beat prison, because people were struggling with beating this game, because you have to beat this game approximately in 130 seconds. As of recording this, only 12 people have recommended the completion of this map on YouTube. The first person to document the completion of this map was Courage X. At first people thought that they were cheating, however it was confirmed that they were not. The haunting sounds of the chase music, which originated from elementary, would play while Slender rapidly teleports behind you or in front of you. The player would also receive unlimited sprint until the music is done. The chase happens most of the time after you collect the fifth teddy bear. On the Game Over and You Survived screen, a poem by Rasen Amirani can be seen. One page is equal to two lines of said poem. The poem reads, Der Großmann, Oh, should I travel through the woods, or should I not, wishing I would? For above me lurks within the trees, no one could hear my deathly screams. The palest man, the blackest suit, bigger than the tallest brute. Six black arms will grab you up, or stalk you till you just give up. A top hat bears upon his head, Makes your soul fill up with dread. He takes your when least expect, boil you up and eat your neck. He'll leave your body not to eat, but stable your corpse on a tree. Fear the man, the slender man, for he can do what no one can. This poem is also used in older versions of Elementary, but more on that later. It is unknown who Amirani is and whether they are a fictional person. In Mention, one of the mementos you can collect in the game is this giant clock which was rather memed by the community, as it is something huge for a human to be able to carry. However, the reason behind this is because the main character is dreaming while in a coma, so it makes sense why he could carry such a big thing. In elementary, body parts can be found in some of the rooms, including an arm, a head, and even a full body without the head. A torso can also be seen on the tree in the outside area. These possibly belong to the previous victims of the Slender Man, which is supported by the line, but stable your corpse on a tree in one of the poems. This is also what makes Elementary the most gory Slender Man shadow map. In Mansion, Claustrophobia and 7th Street, Slender gets more tentacles the more items that are collected. This was done by making three separate Slender entities and having one active at a time which also resulted in Mark being chased by three slenders at once. The slender model without tentacles has stretched hands, while the others do not, but that could be because Mark forgot to change those models. When the player gets caught and mentioned, you hear a heart rate monitor flatline. It is real at the very start of the game that the player is in a coma, and that being caught by slender results in them being trapped in eternal darkness due to slender killing their mind which most likely also will end up in the death of the player. In Sanatorium and Hospice, you have the ability to zoom in by pressing E and zoom out by pressing Q. 
The ability to zoom in and out is removed in elementary, most likely because this feature was useless in the game. For the second layer, we're starting off with gun ending in Sanatorium. In version 1.2.5 of Sanatorium and earlier, collecting all 8 pages would give the player a gun, giving them the satisfaction of shooting Slender right in the head. After Slender has been shot, an outro text will appear which reads, I did it. I had escaped the nightmare that was hunting me. Or so it seemed. It was then that I discovered Slenderman does not let his victims escape, he only chooses to. I have taken his physical body, and in doing so, he has taken my mind. I am Slenderman. This was changed in version 1.3 because Mark thought having to escape the location fit the mythos better. In prison you can get caught on the sinks, which usually happens if you get too close to the sink while sprinting. It is possible to get out again, but you might bump into seemingly random invisible walls in the middle of one of the hallways. If you go between a bed and a sink in one of the rooms, you will glitch out of the map, which will break your game, forcing you to restart. Alright. Oh god fuck! <gasps> what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Slender can sometimes be seen flying in some areas, like in the room the player spawns in, and at the stairwell to the basement near the phone memento. This is due to Slender being programmed to follow the player to each floor, and it's the only Slenderman's Shadow game to have multiple floors. All of the games except Sanatorium and Prison have a bulletin board showing images of the people who donated. These were removed in the Unity remake. You mad bro? On the wall in the dead end in hospice, you mad bro can be seen written in graffiti near a drawing of a troll face, giving this place the nickname the Troll Wall. This is also where a picture of Swedish YouTuber Morfar can be found. In Mansion, if the player collects 10 or more mementos, they can unlock a drum mode. It causes the screen to blur every time the camera moves, similar to the effect in Amnesia The Dark Descent when the player's mental health is low. A rendition of Entry of the Gladiators by the Czech composer Julius Fuchik plays during the mode. Something is following me. In Claustrophobia, if the player collects 8 or more keys, they can unlock Mushroom Trip mode. This mode turns all the colors vibrant, similar to how Thermal Color works. Considering the mode is called the Mushroom Trip mode, the player is most likely high on shrooms. In older versions of Elementary, the same poem as in Hospice would appear on the You Survived screen. This was changed to a poem different from the one in Hospice, this time written by C.R. Kartheiser. The poem reads, No, 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 no. I see you walking, pale with fright, like so many other men, who could not hide, who could not fight, who no one ever saw again. I took them to the other side, for it is me who brings the night. Faceless hunter, hidden eyes, watching to see your demise. Soon his hundred arms will hold, your mortal body, dead and cold. What really in the shadow lurks is one of Devil's darkest works. Do you hear its haunting sound, by which your heart and soul are bound, silencing all of your screams, falling into your dreams? Your sight will blur, your mind will bend, and when it does, your life shall end. You run, you scream, and now you stop. You turn around, your pages drop. You beg me to let you go. Silence. No, 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 no. In the Christmas special, released on January 12, 2013, Santa's model was replaced by one of Santa Claus. The main mechanics are still the same, but the player has to collect 8 presents instead of pages. A techno remix of Jingle Bells by DJ Sutra plays throughout the whole game until the player gets cough. Christmas. <laughs> 
When the player is in the outside area of the elementary map, laughing children can be heard. It was added as a creepy sound effect, and that's probably all there is to it. In Mansion and Claustrophobia, a lady statue reminiscent of the Statue of Liberty can be seen. This could lead to the idea that the two maps are connected, but more on that later. Each map for the series had better images for the game on the Slenderman's Shadow website at the time. For example, Prison, 7th Street, Claustrophobia, and Elementary. For the third layer, we'll begin with covering the Chase Future and Mention, Claustrophobia and 7th Street. Just like in elementary, the Chase music can play in Mention, Claustrophobia and 7th Street, but it's a lot less likely to happen. In older and officially released versions of Sanatorium, the intro text simply says Mark Steen and Ray Burgess present, based on Thunder by Mark J. Hadley, Sanatorium. This was changed in version 1.3 where it says based on Thunder, created by Mark Steen and Ray Burgess, Sanatorium. Sanatorium version 1.0 has been proven to exist, but nobody has the files anymore, and Mark has not been able to find them, making Sanatorium version 1.0 an obsolete version of the game. What is this? 100% more suds. What the fuck? Alright. In elementary, a buck caused a ninth teddy bear to appear. Yami Mash was the first to document this, and it caused him to have a quite humorous reaction. What's that? Is that, is that a ninth teddy bear? There's nine teddy bears? What the fuck? Guys! Ah! Here you tricked me! You tricked me! There shouldn't be nine teddy bears! A thing in Mansion, which will be mentioned later, proves that beating the game with nine teddy bears would be impossible. Slender Prison has been only known to be beaten by the route that Mark Steen uploaded in his YouTube channel. However, Micro, which is your, who you're listening to, found out that Prison has other two possible routes, Backwards and Dead End Routes. These names are dubbed by us. Both routes will be linked in the description. A full screen shader in Prison would turn the flashlight green, which led many players to believe that Slender was nearby. Mark confirmed that this was indeed the full screen shader and people were likely confusing it with a quick flash of static indicating Slender is right behind them. In earlier versions of Sanatorium, the blood on the pages is more unrealistic and more cartoonish. This was changed in version 1.4, where they looked more realistic. When the player gets caught in older versions of Sanatorium, Slender is closer to the player. Slender can also catch the player through a wall in those same versions. If the player goes to a specific area in 7th Street, a street light above the player will break. This is similar to the flashlight breaking in elementary, except here it happens at a specific spot rather than at a random point at the start of the game. In Claustrophobia and 7th Street, if Slender is close to you, your screen will start to darken until you get away from him. If it's still dark, he will kill you shortly after. In 7th Street, the darkening screen is less darker than the one from Claustrophobia. Moving on to the 4th layer. In prison, after having collected one or more photos, a male scream can be heard if you go to a specific area. 
Markiplier uploaded a video of him playing the game on October 8th, 2012, where he discovered the scream. No, 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 no! Ah, oh, come on! Never mind. I was stupid. I thought this was... Ooh! Ah! It was widely believed to play randomly throughout the prison, but it was later discovered that that wasn't the case. In the Unity version, Slender disappears after a map is beaten, requiring the game to be restarted before Slender comes back. The reason for this is unknown, but it is possibly due to something in the code that wasn't properly reset upon winning. A PewDiePie minigame was featured in Sanatorium version 1.1, and would trigger if the player typed Brofist while playing. The only evidence to confirm this is the Sanatorium trailer which shows the gameplay of the game. But recently, Sanatorium version 1.1 was actually found, so now we can show you what happens when you type Brofist. So, if I type Brofist, it launches you to here, but there's a problem there. What that problem is, is unknown, however. Slenderman Shadow was originally going to be released on Steam, but Mark had issues implementing the Steam functionality into Unity. In the 7th Street trailer, in one of the parts of the video, you can see a page in the middle of the map. However, in the final version of the game, the page is not there at all. The reason for this is most likely due to balancing pages. If the player walks near Slender in 7th Street, briefing and whispering can be heard. This is the only map that has this future. This is unlikely to be caused by Slender's sickness, as the wiki does not mention hearing things as one of the symptoms. Carnival FPSC, or in other words, Carnival having a standalone release. This one might be seen as a joke topic, however there is a possibility that this is true. The Carnival trailer shows an FPSC styled Carnival logo, which could give us an idea that the game might have been built in FPSC once. But it was scrapped and instead Mark decided to build it in Unity Engine. Mark was asked if it was built in FPSC before, however he doesn't remember it. When one of our admins, Seal, was looking at the Slenderman Shadow Facebook page, he found an image of Carnival during daytime. The colors also aren't muted, unlike the final version of Carnival. It's unknown why Mark did this, but there might have been a possibility that if you finish Carnival, you would unlock a daytime mode for it. However, this might have been something that was cut out or Mark just wanted to see how Carnival's map would look during daytime. In version 1.0 of Elementary, a door can be found on the opposite side of where this player spawns. It was most likely put in there for testing purposes, then removed in the version 1.1. For a very long time, the door was thought to be locked by players. On February 5th, 2016, a fairly well-known YouTuber by the name of Taste Gaming uploaded a video of him playing this version, in which he managed to open the door. What's that door? Is that the exit door? Oh, I can go in here! Oh, it's right now. Close it! Close it! Seemingly nobody knew how to open the door, but when Player was playing around with some stuff in FPS Creator, he found out that the door could only be opened with the enter key. Please don't tell me this actually works. Please don't tell me this actually works. There are a few more subtle changes in later versions of the map that most players will hardly notice. In version 1.0 of Elementary, the door right opposite the doorway to the donator board with a teddy bear is an empty room with a bed. In version 1.1, said bed was removed and replaced by a fake teddy bear spike. Sticking to Elementary, an obvious part of the map that was later updated was the sky. In version 1.0, the sky is a bright, clear white, as opposed to version 1.1, which was later updated to a much more gloomy appearance with some clouds added. In most versions of Sanatorium, when you go in the bathroom, the window seen between the sink does not have any blinds. However, in the seemingly unknown version of the map, the window does have blinds, as seen in Taste Gaming's video. In version 1.0 of Hospice, when you turn left off the spawning, there is a graffiti room on the right side of the corridor with an empty table. In version 1.1, that room was updated to include a 100% more suds box sitting on the table. In version 1.0 of Mansion, the camera had a dark vignette effect compared to version 1.1 where it was brightened up completely. In the gun ending builds of Sanatorium version 1.2.5 and earlier, all of the fluorescent ceiling lights around the map looked like they were switched on. In version 1.3 and 1.4, all the lights appeared to be off. Next up, we have the fifth layer. A sound file, previously believed to be unused, called bookfold.wave, was found in the game's files. Thanks, player for extracting those, by the way. 
It was later discovered that the sound is actually used in an area near the optimal spot for the 8th photo on the optimal route. Thanks, Micro. That was me! For finding that out. This one is not confirmed, but on the Slenderman's Shadow Wiki Senatorium page, it was stated that Senatorium version 0.9.5 had a Golden Deezer Deagle gun. Even though there is not any evidence to support that, Mark Steen stated that he most likely has made a Golden Deezer Deagle skin for the game. However, Mark does not remember if it was actually a thing, but he claims it is possible. More evidence that the version 0.9.5 could exist is that in the FPSC creator forums, Mark Steen created a thread about Center Senatorium. The game release date was on 12 August, but it was confirmed that version 1.1, which is the first known version of Senatorium, was released on 15 August as a patch to the game. So this confirms the existence of an earlier version, but as of now, an earlier version is not leaked. It is also possible that this version is named version 1.0. In Mansion, Mark accidentally left the debug feature in the game. If the player presses 1, it will add 1 memento. If the memento counter goes above 12, escaping the mansion is no longer possible, and the game over screen doesn't appear, making it impossible to exit the game without pressing escape or alt F4. One of the server members discovered an alternate game over screen in Sanatorium version 1.2.5 when they were pushed out of the bounds, presumably by an invisible player model. Elementary is believed to be based on the Bath Consolidated School in Michigan, USA that was bombed in 1927, according to the wiki. This has been disproven by Ray on Tumblr, and it is actually based on the layout of Midwich High School from Silent Hill. The wiki has since been edited to correct this misconception. Slender's Sickness is a part of some of the maps in Slenderman's Shadow, where the most notable one is mentioned, in which states that the main character fell into a coma due to Slender's Sickness. The main character from Claustrophobia is possibly diagnosed with Slender's Sickness too, because he states that he does not Where remember how he got there. How did I get here? I can't remember. Which is one of the symptoms of Slender's sickness. I need to get out of here. The door frames in the mansion have Nazi eagles and swastikas on the top, giving the idea that the mansion takes place in Germany. However, it could just be a World War II based model pack that Ray had found. In mansion, a hedge can be seen outside a window in the basement. This could likely be the hedge mason claustrophobia. The lady statue in mention at the spawn is also the same statue used in the middle of the age maze in claustrophobia. Mark said it was just the acid reuse, but he's open to the idea that they are related. In the game file for elementary, a sound file named ambience at OGG was found. The sound went unused, as children.ogg is the only sound with children laughing that is actually used in-game. The reason it was removed is likely because it would collide with the children laughing in the outside area. Slenderman's Proxy was going to be the sequel to Slenderman's Shadow, which was built in a custom game engine developed by KeyNXRB from the FPSC forums. Developing a game engine from scratch is a lot of work, and Proxy wasn't the realistic developer goal, so he made the jump to Unity instead. Proxy's development actually started before Carnival, and you can see multiple assets in the game that were later used in Carnival. Proxy was released December 16th, and the DLC, which contained remakes of Sanatorium, Hospice, 7th Street, and Prison, was released February 1st. And lastly, the sixth layer. A look into the game files shows that Hospice was originally going to have a Splendorman mode. It would be triggered if the player had collected 12 or more lines after you have died. Mark says he has no recollection of what Splendorman mode was going to be about. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> this one's a joke entry, but it's about if the player has collected more than 6 photos, the soap mode would be unlocked, changing the photos into bars of soap. To further emphasize the reference, the bars of soap would only be located on the ground. What the fuck is that? 
After Slender Sanatorium was released, Mark Steen announced that the next map of Slenderman's Shadow was going to be based on the Egyptian pyramids, but it was cut for unknown reasons and Hospice was released later instead. However, Mark does have a screenshot of what it would have looked like. The briefing when the player runs out of stamina is the same in Hospice, Elementary and 7th Street, giving the idea that they are the same character. This has neither been confirmed or denied by Mark. In elementary, if the player goes to the first room on the right after you spawn and look out the window, a brick box can be seen just behind the spawn area. It is unknown what this box is for, but we think it might be where Slender spawns. Messing with the camera seemingly proved otherwise, but Slender could have just been made invisible. In the earliest version of Sanatorium, that was mentioned in version 0.9.5, it is known that it had different page locations. This can be seen in Sanatorium's version 1.1's patch notes, where it says, page locations were shifted. As of now, we do not know what those page locations are. However, Micro discovered that in the Rat Rat Sanatorium video, the first and third page were located in the same room but in different directions. This proved that the version the Rat Rat was playing is the earliest version of the game. Version 1.1 did not have those same locations. But that's the only info we have so far about the early page locations. Oh boy. On September 23rd, 2021, Mark Steen leaked the build of Sanatorium that appears to be a test build as he claimed. The build was compiled 9 days before the release of Sanatorium. The majority of the textures are unfinished, apart from 6 of the 8 rooms that have pages. When the game is launched, the original FPSC menu will show up before the intro. The intro will only play once a new game has been started. The intro text was also different. Pages were on the floor instead of the wall, and it was possible to save and load a game, but it would break the page counter and reset it to zero if a player loads a game when they already have collected a page. The first documented completion was uploaded September 24th of 2021. Hey, that was me! It was also the first ever video on YouTube to show off the alpha build. Massive thanks to Mark for digging up this pre-release version of Sanatorium. This probably wouldn't have seen the light of the day otherwise. On our Discord server, Mark Steen had shared one of his emails that is from August 10th, 2012, two days before Sanatorium was released. It has some very interesting stuff about Slenderman's Shadow to discuss, the most notable one being that it was originally called Slenderman's Survival and you had to collect 6 pages instead of 8 pages. What's more interesting is there were 3 more maps that were planned to be released in future at the time. These are Pyramid, which was mentioned before, Church, Factory, and Hospital. Hospital most likely became Hospice afterwards, which is currently released, but we can see that Pyramid, Church, and Factory were cut maps, and we have no info about them whatsoever. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video, uh, we really hope you enjoyed this as much as we did making it. Uh, it's amazing how fast time goes that it's already been 10 years since the game came out, and it's even more amazing that people still play these games, which is honestly the reason this whole project started. I want to give a huge thanks to Mark Steen and all of the other members of the Discord server, and of course also a huge thanks to Microfax for getting the idea of the iceberg, which is what this whole thing started as. But I started messing around with uh, the one debug in Mansion, uh, and I found out how it breaks the game, and I shared that on my own Discord server. And then Micro came in and shared the other game files, for example, Book Fall at Wave, and we kind of started going like full nerd mode. So I was like, you know what? We should actually make this iceberg video a thing. And this happened. To talk about my side of the project, it's definitely the most effort I've put into a video, like, ever. But it was super fun. And it was honestly an honor to play, like, the alpha version of Sanatorium as one of the first people. Uh, so big props to Mark for actually digging that up. So I think that's about it. Um, I'll leave a link to everything that wasn't recorded by me in the description below. But yeah, thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Because you have to beat this game up crocs exactly At first people thought that they were cheating, however 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 why can I not say that? However however why can I not fucking say that?
At first, people thought that they were cheating, however, it was confirmed that they were not. Fucking finally! It is unknown who Amirani is and whether or not they are a fictional person. Yeah, sure, Amirani is definitely not a real person. Uh, they're definitely they're definitely a fictional Persian uh, because they're not from the real Persia. <laughs> Fuck's sake! This was changed in version 1.4, and the blood in the pages looks all. Ah! <coughs> Street light but is it that? Great start. Slenderman's shadow was originally. Was originally wash 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 wash. Slenderman's shadow was originally was. Other difference in other differences. Other difference differences different. Other differences. In version one point zero, the sky is bright. Fuck. In version the sky box. What? <laughs> this could likely be the H Mason claustrophobia. The lady statue in Smen. I'm an aquamia. The soap mode would be unlocked. Jingling the photos of bars into soap. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Changing the photos of bars into soap? <laughs> what? Nope. Let's do that again. Which was built in a custom game engine developed by Key R. What the fuck is this name, dude? The first documented completion was uploaded September 24th of 21.